Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal. I am back with another video. And today I was given the opportunity to interview the showrunners for the new Transformers Bot Bots cartoon. And uh, I, it was a fun conversation. And so we're going to get right into it. So without further ado, let's sit back, relax, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and let's transform and roll out. So, so I'm, I'm very thankful to have you guys on. Uh, I have uh, Kevin Burke and uh, Doc Wyatt, who are uh, the showrunners for uh, Transformers Bot Bots. But you also guys worked on uh, Transformers before, um, and and not many fans, you know, not as many fans know this, but uh, including one of my favorites, uh, Not Crew, Not Crew. Um, <laughs> yes, get that reference. Yeah, um, did, that was that was actually hysterical. Yeah. I love that reference. Um, but how did you guys get involved with the franchise? Were you guys fans before? Did you guys like, you know? Uh... Oh, oh, certainly. I, I um, you know, was young when Transformers came out in 1984. And so between the toys and I had a summer birthday and they were coming up right around then and the Marvel comics that came out summer of 84, like I was immersed in the Transformers world, you know, and that went obviously up through the movie, you know, in 86. And then, so we've been fans, you know, for decades you know since since they since they came out okay um and doc same thing oh, or just yeah 100 percent. i grew up uh, in the suburbs of atlanta georgia and the mid 80s were the transformers period of my yeah. life absolutely launched me in a lifelong love of transformers definitely cool, cool. how'd you guys get involved with writing for the franchise i mean you guys were already writing you know different cartoons but um, well, yeah. Well, what happened was the uh, when the original Rescue Bots was on air, it was my son, who was like three years old at the time, his favorite show in the world. And so Kevin and I sort of fought as hard as we could to get an interview with the showrunners of Rescue Bots. And we pled our case and they gave us an episode. <laughs> and I guess we did OK or they thought we did OK because they gave us a few more episodes. And then um Eventually, we uh, uh, did an episode of Cyberverse and also took over uh, on Rescue Bots Academy okay. uh, and became the executive producers for, for that show uh, eventually awesome. over the course of years. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it, you know, obviously your love for, for the franchise definitely shows because it like it, it, it helps the writing obviously become more enjoyable for a lot of folks because sometimes you get, you know, you get shows that are just they're okay, but like you guys definitely have bring a lot of fun to to it, and and uh, it's well appreciated for sure. Well, thank well, you so much. We've really yeah. enjoyed it, and it's really important to us, you know, as kids who grew up on it, but also you know people who have kids who we want to still enjoy it to sort of walk that line to find a show that uh, longtime fans can love, but also is a is a way in for for new generations. So this this the Transformers can be loved for decades to come. Absolutely, definitely. Um, so BotBots, like the toy line came out around 2018. Um, did you guys immediately pitch that to Hasbro or was that like something that, uh, you know, came out like as, as the, as the toy line was like hitting shells or. Here's, here's how it worked. And, it, and it's an interesting way to go about making a show because we were doing at that time, Rescue Bots Academy, and we had seen the designs and the and coming up for BotBots. And we turned to each other, at, you know, at the Hasbro studios and we were like, why, why is this not a show? This, this needs to be a show. And this seemed to be a, a funny, strange space in the Transformers world that no one had explored yet, it had a lot of opportunity. So we, you know, since we were already working on, on rescue bots, we went you know, to our executives and said, Hey, this should be a show. We want to make this a show. And it was pretty much come up with a take, you know, if we love it, we're going to, you know, see about making this show and Netflix got involved and, uh, and they loved it. And so now bot bots hit the air, but we had seen the toys first. So in some ways it was like being a kid, it was like seeing a toy and imagining what adventures they could have and then making those adventures real. Okay. So it's almost like Hasbro didn't even have like a, a plan, I guess, in place to, to make a show or was this kind of like you, you guys saw it and we're like, we, you've got to, you've got to make a show about this. Like now, <laughs> like, yeah, not initially. I mean, when the, when we saw the designs before the toys, the toy line hit shelves and we immediately came to them and said, we want to do a show. Let us do a show. Please let us do a show. And no, at the time they did not have plans to do a show, but um, certainly nobody, like as soon as we started talking about it, nobody didn't want to talk about it. Like it, it, it I mean, as soon as you saw the products, you knew like that there was a whole world here that could be explored. 
And the, 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 the great thing was as the toys were coming out, we were able to sort of get a bunch of them and have them here in our office. And, you know, as we're talking about the show, we'd be transforming them almost like little fidget toys and lining them up and talking about what we could, yeah. what, what stories we could tell. So it was really like, you know, like when we were kids playing with the, the toys, you know, yeah. making up our own stories. Definitely. That, that that definitely helps when you're t- got got something in your hand tangible to play with and you can mess around with it. And I was going to ask you going to ask you if you guys have been collecting the figures. Do you have any particular favorites of yours that uh, of the toy line or of the toy line? I I kept Sprinkleberry by my computer the whole time we did this. He was always staring up at me and and always something to play with. So so in some ways he was even though he's not you know the lead character in the show. He's not one of the lost bots per se. He was always just the vision of the show to me. Like this, this is the guy we're trying to impress with this show was this little, little donut <laughs> robot. Yeah. There's, there's definitely a few favorites I can, I can imagine. Like wh- which, what was your favorite doc? I'm just curious. Cause Frost Fratu from, from word one, Frost Fratu. Okay. Because Frost, my boy Frost Fratu is a cupcake who is also a robot. <laughs> who is also a vampire, who is also a hypnotist. And that is, that's my sweet spot. That's my zone. He, he's certainly a sweet spot. That's for sure. <laughs> Cause he's got my son's imagination. <laughs> Cause oh, my, my son, that was my son's favorite character in the show. Like, like absolutely loved him. Um, you know, at, like my, my daughter really loved Burgertron. Oh, good. So, you know, um, and just really grew to that character. Whereas like, I'm a, I'm an old school, like I, I, I really love the old teen Titans. So mm-hmm. I grew to love like Raven. And so I really grew attached to, to Bunzai, but the one that I really liked was, was um what was his name? The, the flashlight guy. I, I, I Dimlet. yeah, Limlet, like oh, Dimlet. That's it. Dimlet. Yeah. Like I, I, I loved his character, the way he used like the different light bulbs, like the heating lamp in one episode <laughs> and like, you know, had to like, cause you know, change his light, you know, uh, actually be used on a spy mission. That was, that was hysterical. Um, you know, so I, I really enjoyed like the, the storytelling with that. Um, did the pandemic slow down the production of the show? Like, did, was there like something that like, as you guys were pitching it and then making it like it take a while before it finally aired now here? Well, not especially, you know, it took, it took a little while. We wanted to develop it properly, you know, so we spent a little time developing it because it was something that it's a brand new Transformers world. It's all new characters. You know, this wasn't like a, a number of other Transformers shows where you're, coming into an existing lore and you're wondering what characters you're going to use and where in the timeline you're going to tell this story, you know, mm-hmm. this was all from scratch. And so we spent a little more time developing it, you know, um, than you would, you know, existing shows where you already know 80% of the characters. Um, so there was that. And then the pandemic, we made this entire show in, in the pandemic. We didn't ever meet our voice cast, for instance, you know, everyone did this. This was a perfect example of how you can make a show all from, you know, satellite locations because it was necessity. We had to do it that way. Mm. And it was fun. I mean, I missed the writer's room and having a, a room where we were all together, but we did it through zoom and we, you know, had all of our meetings over, over video and um, animation, you know, still functioned during the pandemic in a way live action didn't. And bot bots is a good example of that. Yeah. I think, I think it definitely uh, like you could not tell that it was done during the pandemic. That's how, like, I will say that like the, the writing, the, the, the way that the actors that done, did everything, the animation was very smooth and, um, and it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. The, the show was absolutely uh, a lot of fun. I, I, I enjoyed, I, I enjoyed it more than I thought that I would. I'm going to be quite honest with you because <laughs> I looked at it and I'm like, cause I'm an older school guy. Right. Sure. So looking at things from an old school perspective, I'm like, okay, is this show really like meant for like adults? But it is meant like, I I like the fact that it was more meant for families. Um, That's that's absolutely what we were. We were gearing it towards kids, but we very much designed it to also be a co-viewing experience because we're both dads. We have both sat and watched television with our kids. And some of that television has been a little bit rougher for us to watch because it, it wasn't really for the family. It was just for the very littlest kid. And um, we've had experiences where we sat and watched shows with our kids. And it's been like, I'm loving this as much as the kid is. And that experience, sharing something, sitting and watching and sharing something together is such a great experience. And that's why, that's why we sort of targeted that, that co-viewing moment, you know? Yeah, and we're old school fans as well. So we wanted to make a show that allowed completely new fans, people, you know, kids or even adults that may have never heard of the Transformers or never tuned in to be able to, to tune into the first episode and know everything that's going on. But also if you've been like you, a lifelong fan, you would also be able to appreciate it. It wouldn't negate anything you'd actually learn to love about Transformers. It exists in its own 
space there. Everything you love about Transformers still remains. You just get this addition. It's this fun, quirky, you know, at times very bizarre little corner of the universe, but uh, something fresh and new in that space. It's like the Sweet Pines Mall, pretty much, or whatever, whatever mall that you, that, that you guys are having it take place in. And <laughs> well, we, we've always thought about the mall as a mall near you, a mall that you might have been to at some mm. point, you know, like that's the mall that this is set. Okay. Right. And we want and we very much want to go back to that original idea, you know, that that even before as a kid, I learned about Cybertron and Optimus Prime and, and you know, Megatron and all of this. I. I just love this idea that anything could be a robot, you know, that, that a car in a parking lot could be a robot, that a jet I saw overhead could be secretly a robot. And so this takes that idea, you know, to, to another level where anything, you go shopping, anything on the shelf could be a robot. Your coffee mug could be a robot. You know, the hamburger could be a robot. It's robots in disguise. Secret a mannequin head out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> that is <Yeah>. shy. <laughs> which, I mean, which is... Secret robots everywhere is what, is what this is really all about. Yeah. At Definitely was a lot of fun. Um, I like that goal, the different squads and stuff like that, like how like everyone kind of fit into their own cliques. Um, it almost like it was like a high school sitcom, you know, how everyone has their own little gangs and they we're, do we're, their own thing. And yeah, we again. were absolutely aiming. I mean, we we were thinking about sitcoms and classic sitcoms when we were making the show. We were also thinking about 80s high school movies like, you know, we're at a mall, not at a high school, but the the idea of having clicks and having in groups and out groups and um, you know that that kind of stuff seemed to fit so naturally with uh, the way they were divided in squads that we took a lot of inspiration from that and and tried to tell some of the stories have a lot of heart we tried to access that kind of heart yeah definitely um, the the squads themselves like I noticed that they 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 showed a few of them and they mentioned more. It, was there more on the plan books that you guys just like you focused in on a certain number of them and then well there's oh, still yeah. there's still more on the plan books you know i mean ho we're hoping that we uh get a lot more seasons of this show you know so let's hope everybody watches it um it's also just based on how much you can fit into animation at one time you know it's not like you can start a show having built and designed every single possible character but we want to create this idea that there's a even more vast world out there. Like there are certain squads you don't meet till the till the fifteenth episode. Sometimes that are that are hiding out there. There are other stores that no one's met. You know, we want to create this idea that the mall is their entire universe, and it's a pretty vast universe when it comes down to it. I loved the seasonal stores. That was hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. Like you, you guys did the spirit hot. Like nothing says my childhood is dead than a spirit Halloween is taken over at Toys R Us. So. <laughs> <laughs> so true so true yeah. that was that was so funny too because then it was like the christmas tree shops and you know that kind of stuff was 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 a lot of fun um now I, it was also as interesting was the the storyline itself was told over 10 episodes or 20 episodes really uh in in you know 10 chunks um it was an overarching story um was that like a conscious decision the way that you told that story because like a lot of the a lot of times you see like you, you some when you thought when you th when you think comedy you might be thinking that the show is going to be like just a bunch of sight gags like Looney Tunes. Um, there really isn't much of a plot in a Looney Tunes car. I mean, there is, but there, there isn't. But like there was an overarching story over the course of 10 episodes, even though each episode could stand alone. Was that like a conscious storytelling decision or? No, absolutely. I mean, and that's really thanks to our streaming partner at Netflix. Netflix has been a great partner. They've been here since the beginning. Like they uh, were amazing with us and they, because they, the way that they drop shows, you know you can always see the first episode. Like sometimes on broadcast television, it's like, well, we have to tell a story that anyone tuning in to any random episode can immediately understand. But with the streaming, we were able to really tell a connected, um, you know, a story that progressed without worrying that the audience was missing episodes. And so, yeah, we were able to kind of lay out this cool serialized story um, and, and give real arcs to the characters. And that's very much kind of how we like to tell any of our stories is to have an overarching story, that there is some growth, that people go through some things, the characters go through some things in it. And it would have been, you know, a way to do the show would be a bunch of gags. And I think people who haven't watched it yet might think that that's what it is, you know, just a bunch of puns or gags. And we wanted, and that could have been fun, but that would have been like eating a bunch of candy. You might watch three or four episodes and be numb to it after a while. And we wanted this to mean something, you know, this is, an all ages show, you know, this isn't just for kids to get a bunch of colors or something just fun. We want everybody of all ages to be able to follow these characters and care about what they go through and, and to really 
reach a conclusion that means something that you've invested in. Yeah, I, the, I will say that like the first two episodes, well, let's say the first episode at least, like it felt like you guys were getting your footing going. And then once the show progressed and I started actually, like that's when I started caring about the characters as the as the show continued. So like it it took a bit for me and maybe just because I'm an older fan, but my kids like they ate it up like episode one, like that was, that was like the, the difference in age. And you can really see that with, with, you know, with storytelling, like it takes someone like myself a little bit to, to get into it a little bit more. And I, but I, I, I grew to enjoy the, sh the show more as it continued. Whereas my kids, it was just like, it, like, I really like Burger Tron. Like I really like Frost for Ratu. Like that's, those are my, my, you know, my, my kids' favorite, uh, you know, characters in the show. So they want to see more of that, but um the uh, the other thing I was uh, curious about, and this is a really fan fan based question, and a lot, you're probably going to hear a lot of, is so the energy on storm comes, it turns the everyday objects into transformers, but are they actually made out of robots that are made out of organic material, yeah. or are they made out of you know, or, or like because like transformers are supposed to be made out of what cybertonium, you know, or something along those lines, like uh, you know, or or are they organic material in this particular universe? Well, let's just say this. Uh, Burgertron is a robot made of meat. <laughs> and that, that is our lore, and we stand yeah. by that. Okay. And, well, and Von Doc, let's be, let's be clear. Meat and, and pickle bun. and other things. And pickle yes. and meat other bun. items. But yes, his uh, joints might be made out of beef, and his, uh, you know, his head might be made out of uh, bun. But that's, as long as he's alive, he's not rotten. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But that's what puts him in danger. Do you know, like if someone grabs him and tries to take a bite out of him, it might actually take a bite out of him. <laughs> that's 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 kind of creepy, but but hilarious <laughs> at the same time. I love it. I love it. Creepy um, and hilarious is our zone. There you go. <laughs> that's awesome. That is awesome. Um, the the toys themselves are different in design from yeah. this show. I, I did take a take note of that. Um, was that like, did you guys, you know, was that like intentional when you guys, uh, you know, made, oh, made it that way? Yeah, or? I mean, we, we definitely, I mean, worked with Boulder and spent probably hundreds of hours, uh, you know, going over designs and it, yeah, we absolutely made design choices that, um, you know, kind of supported the stories we wanted to tell. I mean, the sense that the toys are, are often uh, very blocky and often have visors or face masks. Um, and we were looking to tell stories that had a lot of heart and a lot of like interpersonal connections. So um, we sort of needed faces that would emote and eyes that would you know, make eye contact and, um, you know, uh, take away some of that blockiness and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, but we very, very much love the toy designs. It was just a matter of uh, giving a style to the toy designs so that we could tell these kinds of stories. And speaking of the toys, by the way, it timed with the release of the show on Netflix. Um, six. It, that's right. Series six of the toys have launched as a pre-order uh, and there's 75 new characters. There's some characters directly from the show. There's some vehicles that are in the show. And so as, as a toy collector, and I see you yeah. are too. Speaking I'm of which, speaking of which, now we got to tell Hasbro, they need to release a box set of the lost spots that are in the show with a cartoon accurate design you know so to have have the mouth on burgertron have the uh you know a more female design for for kick me and you know a a, a, a cool different buns eye and stuff like that like that would be really neat to see like we're that kind of board, stuff we're on board with that yeah, yeah we, definitely we'll the petition we'll sign it yeah, yeah. believe yes because as much and the other thing is is that because now we're on wave six the toys themselves have been out for a while. So like now, now people are going to be rushing to the stores. Where's my, where's my uh, next spot bots wave, right? <laughs> Cause the cartoon is a lot of fun. And uh, I really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time out. I really do. Um, oh, thank God to be here. Um, Thanks for the opportunity to talk about the show. Yeah. I mean, I could talk, like I said, I could talk to transformers for hours and um, you know, but if you got, you guys are more than welcome to show up on the sh show again, uh, you know, anytime um, you know, maybe when, when, when series season two comes out. So Obviously, this interview could have gone on for a lot longer, and of course, we had to cut it a little bit short because, you know, time is of the essence. But I hope you guys have enjoyed the interview, and I wonder what you guys think. Of course, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe. Check out my other videos as well. I have many more Transformers discussions and retrospectives coming down the pipeline. And in addition to that, you can also check out BotBots on Netflix currently right now. So, uh, as always, guys, until next time, till all are one.